Hot 106, Nick G Afternoon Show in studio right now with Nikki Heaton. What's up? Hi. So you've been all over the place. We were just talking before the interview. I said, do you know where you are? And you said, absolutely not. <laughs> We've been everywhere, yeah, and I have no idea where that's I am. A good, that's a good thing to Kinda. be working this month. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you've been all around the country. Mm-hmm. I know that you're constantly touring, but the bedroom tour, I play with me, and that had to be just awesome. It right? was insane, because it was not only the first tour I've ever been on, but it was pretty much the first time I was ever really performing. And it also happened to be me headlining this tour. Mm-hmm. So it was like a bunch of firsts. And it surprisingly went amazingly well. Um, people showed up and I literally thought I was going to have like two fans, but we like packed every single show. So it was insane. That's one of the things I found interesting watching a lot of the videos of you performing mm-hmm. is how insane and intense your fans are with the lyrics singing back to you and following you around the country. I mean, it's oh, got to yeah. be a great feeling. People like literally get on a plane and fly across country just to come and see me do like a 15 minute set and they know every single word and they're like girls throwing their bras on stage it's insane <laughs> well talking about your song uh your single bad intentions mm-hmm. and me goes we're playing it right now on hot 106 oh, and cool. let's talk about background first how did this song come about um i wrote bad intentions the original Almost four years ago, um, I wrote, wrote it before I ever signed to my my label. So it was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And I think it was just one of those songs that just came so naturally to me. I think that was one that I wrote on my back porch. And I think I wrote it in like 20 minutes. And it was just, and I feel like those are the, are the songs that really are the ones that stick around because it, it came so naturally to me and I didn't have to think about it or, you know, like make like a scientific method to like write this song out. I literally wrote it in like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was always everyone's favorite and I never really knew why I was like, yeah, it's, it's a cool song, but like, why is everyone going so nuts over it? Um, and so having that song being played for the last like three years, I got so tired of it, but everyone wanted to keep hearing it. So I was like, okay, let's do a remix. Let's, let's do something new. Let's do something, something exciting. And, um, all of a sudden the Migos jumped on it. I didn't even know until I heard it and it just sounded so right. And it was just so organic and it kind of like breathed new life into that record. And now everyone can love it all over again. I think it's really something really cool. Something you just mentioned though, about you writing it four years ago and it kind of shows the grind and the process yeah. to getting music out. Mm-hmm. Isn't that, I mean, what, what's the, what's that process been like for the new music that you're hoping to release? Well, it's scary thinking that, you know, you have this song that you believe in so much and you think it's going to be a hit, but sometimes those songs take like six years to really pop off. And mm-hmm. I never knew that. I didn't know that most of these hit songs that are out now have been around for, for so long. So it's a little bit scary because I feel like me as a human being, when I write these songs, I'm in a certain place in my life and I'm in a certain mood. And in four years, I might not be in that same place, right. you know? So I feel like I, that's why I'm always constantly like writing new music, always having new stuff. Um, because you never know when it's going to pop off. But to your point, too, about Bad Intentions, I mean, someone just hearing it last week is going to connect to those lyrics yeah. in, in, in the, probably the same way that you were four years ago. So it's yeah. kind of a, a different dichotomy of, of how you're supposed to approach music, wouldn't you think? That's why I think my music is so different, and I feel like different in a good way, mm-hmm. is because I don't write about specific points in time or specific people or things like that. So I could have written it 10 years ago and some little 13 year old girl can identify with it. And so can, you know, a 50 year old mom. And I feel like it's just because the way I write, it's about emotion and, it, and it's about just feeling the way that you feel. And I feel like that is kind of a universal kind of connection. So we talked about Bad Intentions. It's being played on radio. The next thing is the music video. And I yeah. know you dropped a little teaser on Instagram, but what can you tell our listeners about the Bad Intentions music video? Um, it's going to be pretty intense. We actually just finished filming a little bit while a l- little while ago. Um, <laughs> the Migos were so crazy. <laughs> Having to wrangle all three of them and try and do like a business music video is was, it possible? was <laughs> one of the hardest things I feel like anyone, like I don't think anyone from Capitol knew what they were getting themselves into like they were all like oh my god i need an advil like what do we do do we put them on leashes like they keep disappearing (laughs) um it was pretty intense but they're really fun and they're really (laughs) they're 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 really cool um but the music video is gonna be crazy um i wrote the treatment for it um so it's gonna be very like dark and mysterious and like i play this cool villain and um there's like you know guns and money and like heists and this really cool mansion um 
but I yeah, and I'm actually going to LA today to go and finish editing it because I'm very hands on and controlling, so I have to go edit this music video by myself. When do you expect it to drop? As soon as I finish editing it, Great. I'm going to be like, send it out. Let's go. So something you just mentioned that I also wanted to bring up, which is kind of a crazy question when you talk about music, but why is it important to you to write all of your music and to be so hands-on? I've read a bunch of stuff with you in the past talking about how another thing in the music business that you that kind of caught you off guard is how so many hands are in so many different things, especially when it comes to lyrics and writing mm-hmm. music. So why is that important to have so much control for you? Um, for me, there really was never any other option other than me being in complete control because I didn't come into this business wanting to be the next pop star. Um, I actually never thought I was going to be a performer in any sense. I thought if anything, I would be a songwriter for, for someone else, or I would be a ghostwriter. Um, because growing up music and songwriting was really the only thing that kept me alive. I had a tough childhood. I had a lot of things happen to me, and writing was my one outlet that was pretty much the only thing that I had. So coming into this industry and people were like um, trying to put this song in front of me and trying to make me into this person and be this puppet, I was like, that's not happening. And that was one of the reasons that we had so many problems is because I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not sacrificing who I am. I'm not compromising. And they're like, well, you can't write your own songs. You can't write your own hits. And I'm like, well, I just wrote Bad Intentions, didn't I? And it turned out to be the biggest hit ever. So by me holding my ground and being like, no, I'm not doing what you want me to do. I'm doing things my way. um, It ended up working out amazingly because I feel like over time, musicians and artistry has turned into like just like being a a puppet and being like this like cardboard cutout and I feel like it's lost the magic of what music used to be and so you know you don't have to like me in my bikini you don't have to like my Instagram but respect the fact that what I do is 100% me and speaking of writing and new music you dropped on Instagram Stone to Miami yeah <laughs> so what can you tell us about the background of this song and then maybe some new music for your fans to expect Well, I just felt bad that I hadn't put out some new music for my fans. I wanted to feed them. And um, I've been constantly working since I put out the Bedroom Tour playlist. I have have like hundreds of songs. And I feel like I just got back to Miami and I was chilling and it was really, really hot. And um, I I was just in that in that mood where I wanted to write like a fun, weird song. And um, so I just leaked Stoned in Miami that I produced and I wrote, obviously, um, just as like a little like fun song for my fans, and I actually just performed it at that concert in Maine, and people went nuts for it. So I'm glad they liked it. Isn't that an interesting thing about putting a song online though? Is that you go and perform it for what would be your first time, and everyone, all of your fans know the it lyrics, was crazy. They know how to sing it. It's nuts, right? Like I was expecting everyone to be like, "Hmm, what is this song?" But they were already like, "Yeah," like I, they knew every single word. I was like, "This is so weird," but I love it. So when the album drops, I mean, we have to have you back. But best of luck with touring and the new video and with Bad and. Oh, thank you. I'd love to come back. (laughs) Providence, why wouldn't you? Have me back anytime, anytime. (laughs) Awesome.